Praise God, it's good to be here this morning. Appreciate the Lord's Spirit this morning here. Uh, I feel like it's been the Lord this morning, what we've done. And, uh, you know, I want more, don't y'all? I just uh, feel such a need, and that's a good thing, you know, because if we don't have a need and we, we, we don't want more, then we begin to stagnate. And pretty soon, uh, we tend to do what has been happening for years in the church world, is we build, you can build four walls around what you got and just be satisfied. I'm not satisfied because there's something in me that just wants God this morning. I need, to be, I need Him. I need Him more than I need my next breath, actually. Because the God that gave me my next breath he gives me my next breath, is with me today, and he's with you this morning. I don't care what your problem is this morning. There's something bigger than greater than that, because if we're so confined to what we're in, and if we're so uh, looking at what we're in, and we're taken up with that, that's what we're going to be filled with. I want more this morning. I had a scripture come to me earlier, and I trust this is the Lord, and I don't know what God's got for us this morning, but if this isn't it, we just need what God wants. Wants this morning. Uh, where's that? Uh, yeah, Psalm uh, chapter 42 this morning. Praise the Lord. Uh, I just have a burden this morning. And I'm not, I'm not up here because I do this. I'm up here this morning because if anything... I just want God. I, I'm up here this morning because this is what is the most important thing in our lives today. You know, every, you know, God came, I'll quote the scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, I'll quote the King James, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Folks, this morning we are dead in trespasses and sins. And, uh, but the Lord Jesus Christ went to that cross and he died and he rose and he has given us his Holy Spirit. And his Holy Spirit resides in each and every blood-bought child of God. And that spirit is here this morning, and he's in us. He's with us. Praise the Lord. Chapter 42 starts out here. It says, as the deer pants for streams of water. You know, we've got to have water to live. Praise the Lord. God made that deer. It, that deer just does what God made it to do. Drink and eat and lay down. He's a beast. But God wants something more. God, God made man. God made me. He made you. Not just to be an animal out here, not just to be a beast, you know, but to be living by the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, giving praise by the Spirit, and with that Spirit to the God that made us. And we have that this morning. I just want to praise the Lord this morning. I refuse to let rocks, animals, birds cry out. They do what they're supposed to do. They glorify the Lord. The whole creation glorifies the Lord. But I want to just praise the Lord this morning. Because this death, He came to save that that was lost. I was lost and now I'm found. And I want to praise the Lord this morning. And I long for the, for the, for the, for the God that fills us with, that can come. The God that made the universe has been, always been, forever shall be, from everlasting to everlasting. I praise that Lord this morning. And that is what we need 24-7. When we leave this place today, we can go, we can leave, we have His Spirit wherever we go. 
in the schools, in the office, in the workplace, wherever. It doesn't matter. We need God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It says, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. I need the living water this morning, and the living water is forever flowing here this morning. It never dries up. This is a well. It never goes dry. You, we can come to Him anytime, and I just want to give Him praise this morning. Get my mind off of everything, off of whatever. I don't care what it is. Everything in this world is going south. It's going downhill. It's, it's been prophesied. It's been spoken. And it is, it's, God's made a decree. Death has been passed on all this creation out here. But God's put a new life in us. A new life. And that's Jesus Christ in us. The hope of glory this morning by the Spirit. And that this morning is what we feast on. That is what we draw on. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. But righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's, amen. It doesn't come with observation. It's within us this morning. Hallelujah. It says, My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We got the God of the universe, the God that created us and made us. Hallelujah. He's living in us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I just thirst for God this morning, folks. I just want Him. I need Him. And He's right here. He's right here to meet every need. And it's not just not to so-called, you know, fix things for us, you know. I'm going to tell you something this morning. Praise the Lord. Whether God does or does not fix this or that and the other, and I tell you what, that, that's not the case. The case is He's living within us this morning by His Spirit, and that is what we need this morning, is Him residing within this body and within each and every one of us. That's the victory that overcomes the world. That is the victory this morning that overcomes everything that's wrong. Because we're not looking for God to come and fix stuff, smooth it out, make life easier. No. We're looking for the, we're just looking for him because whether he does or whether he doesn't, praise God, we're going to give him glory. I'm going to give him glory and praise this morning regardless because he can do it. He can do it. He can do anything. My God, I believe the God, if the God that created you and me and everything that we see, he can do anything if he, chose, if he chooses to do it. I surrender to him this morning. And, and just bow before Him and praise Him. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit this morning, Lord. You're with us. Praise God. I was, uh, I couldn't help but think of the, uh, that little devotional book, Jesus is Calling, that uh, the devotion for this morning, as um, Mike was sharing there, uh, it speaks of the Lord's presence. And, it's, and it spoke of his present presence. You know, we think oft, oftentimes of that scripture. Uh, he is that very present help in time of trouble. The truth is, he is that very present presence. 7.24. When we feel like it and when we don't. When we are full of faith and when we're struggling with doubt. Uh, circumstances good, circumstances bad, as the world calls them. It doesn't matter. He is in us. Our living Lord, our God by His Spirit is in us. Our hope of glory, future tense, our hope of glory, present tense. Everything that we stand in need of, He has supplied with His very life. And we were just singing that song, Be the Center. Isn't that the longing of your heart? As that deer pants for the water, we pant for the living water. We want him to be the center, the fire in our heart, the wind in our sail. He is our love. He's our faith. He's our grace. He's our everything. He's our life. And um, 
As Mike was finishing up there, he was talking about surrendering. And I was, I couldn't help but remember uh, something that, uh, and we sang that song this morning, something that Christy shared with Dean and I not long ago. She's talking about the chorus there, there in Columbia singing uh, that song. Uh, what's the title of it? Um, Let the Worshippers Arise. Let the Worshippers Arise. And it, it speaks of, uh, uh, Lord help me. Um, it speaks of the uh, sons and the daughters. You know, let the, let the worshipers rise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. And then it says, I surrender my all. I surrender to the king. And as they were worshiping the Lord and singing that song, she said the Lord gave her, because she, in her mind, somehow or another, she had those two thoughts separated. And then the Lord gave her this scripture as they were singing it, made it real to her heart and made it one. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Folks, to surrender our all is our spiritual act of worship. Is he not worthy? Is he not worthy of our all? He's worthy of my heart, mind, soul, body. He's worthy. He's worthy to be worshipped. And he's worthy to be worshipped. 724. He wants us to know, folks, it is precious and wonderful that we can come together like this. He's provided this time. Thank God for it. And he's here in a corporate way. I know that. And, and it's wonderful to be able to love and adore and worship him together. He wants us to worship him 724. And he is worthy. He is worthy. You don't separate those two, th two thoughts. The sons and the daughters sing, I surrender my all. I surrender to the king. I want to worship him with my life, don't you? And he is worthy. And he is working in our hearts and lives to do just that. And I praise him, I thank him. Bless the Lord. Praise God. I'm, I'm thankful the Lord just chose to come be with us this morning. And that he does when he does. Um, I thought of a scripture in John chapter 4 um, when we were worshiping. And, uh, you know, God wants us to learn how to worship him. Uh, he, re he really does. And I believe he's teaching us. And... It's not that he condemns us when we don't do it perfectly, but, but he wants us to learn how to worship him. What the secret is of worship, because when you worship the Lord, I mean, his, it's, it's like the scripture says, he inhabits the praises of Israel. But we've got to learn that way to, to come before him, and it's not all, it, it has nothing to do with emotion. It has to do with the spirit and the truth. And... Um, I just thought of this uh, this morning while we were um, while we were worshiping, and uh, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but you know the story how uh, Jesus went and talked to this woman in Samaria. But if if you uh, if you turn back uh, to the beginning of this, and I just want to read this one scripture back here at the beginning, in verse four, it says he must needs go through Samaria. To me, that's saying. When Jesus goes somewhere, it's not an accident. He's being led to go there. He's being called to go there. Somebody's crying out. Somebody's got a need. He doesn't just pass by accidentally. And he didn't just pass by this morning accidentally. I believe he wants us to learn how to worship him. But if you go, if you go on down in this chapter... Um, you know, Jesus has been talking with her here, and then he kind of he says something to her that nobody knew. She didn't think anybody knew but, him, but her. Um, he asked her if she had a husband, and she said, no, I have no husband. And Jesus said, thou hast well said that you don't have a husband, for you had five husbands, and the one you're now with isn't your husband. And that you truly said, you know, you spoke the truth there, you know. And, and God loves the truth, you know. And because if we come to the light as he is in the light, then, I mean, wonderful things are going to happen. So, anyway, the woman, after he said this, the woman said to him, 
Sir, I pre perceive you're a prophet. Now here comes her religion. <laughs> she's going to bring her religion out. You know, she's been, she's, she knows a few things. She's heard a few things. But it says, our fathers worship in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to work, worship. Now, isn't that like this religious world today? Oh, we have God. Or, or this, one, oh, this flavor over here, no, we have God. This is where you ought to worship. What did Jesus say? He didn't address that. He said, Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you will neither worship in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. It's not a matter of the place that we go to. It has nothing to do with the place. Nothing to do with the church or what is called the church today. What does it have to do with? Ye worship, ye know not what. Now this is the first step right here. There are multitudes of churches and multitudes of churches filled with people, but they don't know what they're worshiping. They don't, they don't know Jesus Christ. You know why they don't know Jesus Christ? In many cases, it's because Jesus Christ hasn't passed by there. It's because Jesus Christ, they, there hasn't been a need to go over there. Because there's nobody really crying out, God, we need you. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not putting this on, I'm not saying this is a blanket statement on all churches. And some churches have just been deceived. And God, God still got his eye. If they're his church, he's not going to lose a one. I believe that with all my heart. But this is, this is the first step. You've got to know God. If you don't know God, then like Mike was talking about, that spirit's not residing within you. You can't worship him. Because you don't even know who you're worshiping. You're just going through a form. You just come in and you just sing songs. Now they might make you feel good because some of the words are good. But like I said, it has nothing to do with feeling. You know, I, some of our worship is like this. You know. But really, God wants us to be steady. You know, whether, whether we're up here or down here, he wants us to worship steady. You know, because he's worthy. That's why he said in First Thess uh, Thessalonians, in all things give thanks. Everything. You know, the bad things, what we label bad, and the good things, what we label good. Worship him. Thank him for everything that comes our way. Because believe me, it is all good. If we can see it by faith, we, we can see it. But anyway, he says, you worship, you know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Now, he's not necessarily, and of course this, this goes into another subject that I don't want to get off into. But the true Israel, the true Jew, those that really know him, that's who salvation is of. And, and let me tell you, the church that is in tune with Jesus Christ, and he comes and he anoints that church. He comes and he must needs go by that place and be in that place. That's where salvation's coming forth. Because that's where he is and, and the words that the people who get up and speak, they're going to be anointed with his life. And that seed that goes out is going to be sown in hearts. And it's a living seed. It's not a dead seed. It's, it's not an, a corruptible seed. It's incorruptible. It can't be corrupted. But anyway, he says, salvation is of the Jew. But the hour cometh, and now is, is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And in truth. You know, this morning I, ca I come in, but I, I, you know, I didn't know what the Lord wanted or anything. But I, I did pray. I just said, Lord, help us that we can come together this morning and just worship you in spirit and in truth. Because we can't worship you any other way. That's the only way we can worship you. And you have to turn your, you have to turn your mind, uh, you have to shut your mind down, in one sense, to all the things that are crowd, trying to crowd in and choke out that word, that truth. This is the truth. You know, I've been reading in Isaiah, um, and from chapter 43 to where I read this morning in 49, 
First in chapter 43, I think to 46 or something, 47, God's talking about how he is, you know, fear not. <laughs> Don't be dismayed. I'm with you. He, he is telling the people that I've blotted out your transgressions as far as the, the heavens are above the earth, you know. And he, and he comes right on through and, and he's trying to encourage Israel. The fact that he is God and beside him there's none else. You know, he's, he's teaching them who he is. And then he comes down to where I read this morning and he's talking to Babylon, this world. Let me tell you something, this world is headed for total destruction. If there is ever a time when we need to start drawing near to God, it's, it's today. It's today. I mean, he starts talking about what he's going to do to Babylon. And I'm going to tell you, I don't want to be one of those who's a lover of pleasure. I don't want to be one of those. I want to be one that's a lover of God. Like, like the song said this morning, you know, I want to be standing on your side. You know, and I was thankful when Joe wanted to sing that song because I, I felt like it was going kind of like this in the worship service this morning. And, but that song just spoke to my heart, be the center. He needs to be the center of our worship. And if anything else takes that away, then we've missed the mark. We, we may be making ourselves happy. We may be, you know, just kind of blowing ourselves up. But I'm going to tell you, God, he needs to be the center. We just need to worship him. Just keep your eyes on him. You know, he's the only one that's worthy of praise. None of us are anything. Not a single one of us. You know, I wish, you know, I wish sometimes, I, and I've, I've told the Lord this, I said, God, if there was some way I could just worship you and nobody see me, I said, that would be great. <laughs> just to worship you. Because I don't want anybody to look at me. I'm nothing. Matter of fact, if you really knew the truth about me, you'd probably throw me out of the church. <laughs> Maybe not, but, but I'm not good. There's only one good, and that's God. He's worthy of praise. I'm just thankful that he chose to pass by this morning. He must needs come by here this morning. He wants us to learn. He wants us to learn to worship him because I'm going to tell you, when you just let go of everything and you don't feel like worshiping him, you got all these things crowding in on you, you don't feel like it, do it anyway. Like the first, uh, first or second song they sang, praise the Lord. He can work through those who praise him. Just praise him. And, and God will come. He'll inhabit that praise. He may, may not happen just like that, but you keep speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart because that's where it's at, in your heart, not up here, in your heart, to God, and God will come and he will set us free. He did this morning. I'm thankful. <laughs> I'm just thankful to be able to come here this morning and just worship him, and I'm thankful that he's teaching us how to worship him because he alone is worthy. Amen. I just wanted to add this one little thought right quick that uh, that scripture had come to me and, uh, and Ron shared it there. And um, I was thinking, you know, the Lord put it in the right order. He said, uh, and, and he did say, uh, the hour is coming and now is, it now is, that the true worshipers of God will worship him in spirit and in truth. First things first, you must be born again. We have to have his spirit. Because he's the only one that can glorify the Father. And the Father's the only one that can glorify the Son. And worship him in spirit and in truth. And I was thinking in regards to truth. That's not just with respect to God's word, which is truth. And respect to our Lord, who is truth. But also with, with respect to the attitude of the heart. That we be truthful. That we be honest before God. And if we're honest before God this morning, we can everyone say, Lord, we desperately need you. We need you. Praise God.